about a dozen years ago, I saw a movie, Danny DeVito, Matthew Broderick, uh, Kristen Chenoweth. Some of you actually may even know what the movie is I'm about to mention. Uh, two guys were going at it. They were trying to outdo themselves uh, by putting Christmas lights on the roofs of their houses. And their, their attention was brought to this problem by their two teenage daughters who looked at an interesting website that, uh, and here's a screenshot right from the movie, that basically gave them a live, real-time, satellite view of the neighborhood. Let me just refresh that. Live, real-time, satellite view. Now, the people in this audience, you know that Google Earth stitches together millions and millions of, of images to create a smooth, scrollable view of the Earth from any location. And uh, you know that it's not live in satellites. You know, we're, we're cool with that. But... Um, I was sharing this with my students, future teacher educators, at the University of Arizona, so this was quite a few years ago, and um, I heard a question that stuck with me for years and years and years as we were looking at these, we were looking up our addresses and seeing our homes and say, oh, look, there's my father's car or whatever. And one of my students said, is this live? And I, and I said, well, wait, what? He said, so, can I go outside and, and, no, and I said, I had to gently explain to him how Google Earth worked, and he was very disappointed. In fact, he was let down by the power of Google Earth and the algorithm, I have to tell you, which is a very strange thing, but it's not, I, I realized over the years that the issue was this, that he was suffering from a modern ailment that affects many of us. It's the expectation of immediacy. And computer technology has done that. We have become a society that gets agitated when the microwave takes too long. I found this little... Uh, we're a society that has got to the point where if we're standing in line and we don't have our smartphone, we're not connected, it is time wasted. And, and this is problematic to me, uh, especially because this expectation of immediacy has creeped into my wheelhouse. My wheelhouse is learning. I train teachers. I was a high school teacher. I was a special ed teacher. I've been, education has been my thing for, I hesitate to say this, 40 years. But did someone just was, well, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, in three different countries. But I'm an experimenter. So let me explain some of the experiments I do because I love educational technology. I try to take on topics that are extra challenging. I learn as much as I can, but it's got to be mitigated and guided by educational technology. So I've used this, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say their name, this language learning app, let's say. And so my goal was this. I went through every single one. Has, if anyone ever done it, I just want to hear from you. Yay, you've done Duolingo before? Good for you. I went through every single lesson in French. I filled what they call, it filled my Christmas tree. Everything lit up. Then I said, okay, let's see if this ed tech stuff works. I'm gonna do Spanish. Ba, 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 ba. I filled the Christmas tree. I did Italian, ba, 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 all the way down. It's too easy, Roman letters. I then went into Japanese, did every single one of the Japanese lessons right to the very end. And I can tell you this from my own personal educational research experience on my brain. Je ne parle pas français. <laughs> no, ha, no hablo espanol. Pero lentamente, you know, mi español mejorando. But, and then, non parlo italiano, and finally, nihongo ga hanishimasen. I'm so sorry. But, <laughs> but I tried. Now, here's the problem. I have seen people use technology to hasten what they think is learning. I have seen kids copy and paste into essays and call it their writing. I have seen kids take images and crop them and recolor them and morph them and call them their art. I have seen kids take their music that they, they voiced over and auto-tune it and call it music. It's not music. Um, so my concern is that this is, although this is a good start, this is all it is. It's a great start toward learning skills, learning skills that they can use that they need assistance with. And I have, over the years, as I've been practicing these tools and techniques, I've come up with a few lessons that I want to share with you right now, and some of them will resonate with you as teachers. Um, the first is this most important thing. Learners need time and private space away from evaluation to develop their skills. That's my personal opinion. Um, and here's the story. I'd like to give you an example. This is 
cast your mind back to 2006, when there were 28 million MySpace subscribers. And I was in a computer lab, you know, I was running a computer lab at the University of Arizona, and one of my students was typing away, editing her MySpace profile. And I said, that's really interesting. Hmm, I've never seen this at work before. She was tweaking this, adding this, uploading a picture. She suddenly realized I was behind her, and she stopped and said, do you mind? This is private. I went, well, all 28 million people may beg to differ, but it took me a long time to figure out what she was saying. She was saying this, this is my private space where I need to develop myself, develop my digital identity, my digital footprint. This is who I am. And until, until I press enter or publish, this is none of your business. It took me a long time to figure that out. I've since apologized to her wherever she is. So learners need time and all this stuff, but they also, one other thing I discovered, and I discovered it the hard way, and I'm gonna tell you a little story. Expect branches as you're learning new tools with technology. Here's the story. Years ago, I was a crazy little kid. I always wanted to take pictures of my neighborhood from the air. So I got the little cameras, not this kind of, well, I won't tell you what kind, and I lobbed them in the air. I attached them to kites. I attached them to anything I could. I, we had a trebuchet one year, and I attached an egg timer to the thing, and I even attached one, threw it high, high, high into the air with my little army man parachute attached to it to try and get pictures from above. This is just my geeky thing. I long since gave up on that, that, that dream till a few years ago. Somebody gave me a drone for Christmas, and you've heard the stories that so many drones stuck in trees, not me. Once I got that drone, I thought, I have a creative arts goal that I'm going to use with technology. And that goal is this. I am going to take a drone, fly over the treetops in my neighborhood, and, they're, and I'm going to do this four or five times. So it's going to go from green leaves to, to fall foliage, and then spring, winter and spring and start all over again. I think it's going to be fantastic. That's my goal. This may have been an indicator of what was about to, to come. So first test video, all right, here we go. And up and away. Uh, uh, it, it, it can help it along, help it along. And um, not so much. So it, it was a nice try. I had to upgrade to a better drone with more stability and I figured this'll do it. And he said to my darling, beautiful wife, can I spend $500 on this drone? She said, if you need to. Yeah, duh. <laughs> Next try, there are the trees, and I was, I could do it, I could do it. This is my practice shot. I'm going to go up and over the branches and take that first. Oh. <laughs> this, I know, this is when people go, wah, wah, wah. Yeah, just, I'll just leave it hovered there for a while. I think I startled a deer as well. But. <laughs> This is part of learning, expecting branches. Those branches, more than any guide, any mentor, any, any, anyone, taught me the lesson that, you know, it's not gonna be perfect every time. You've gotta dust yourself off and get back up there and ask your wife for another $500. For <laughs> so here are the, here, just in a nutshell, with this expectation of immediacy that I wanna break it down for you, four quick rules, slow, down. You don't expect everything to be perfect first time off. Expect branches, please. Third rule, create in a private space that's all yours. Avoid the dull dread of grades and when you're learning, when the students are learning. Now, let's get back to my the final project, hovering over those treetops. And, and this is a beautiful Saline, Michigan with the water channel. I think I'm almost got it. I'm getting closer and closer to my goal. And I realized the little window, the little dot thing was stuck down. Yeah, so my wife found it in the trees. We searched for, for hours and finally found it. Ladies and gentlemen, expect branches. Thank you so much for your time.